Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here. You know, when I'm streaming, I'm often doing activities that people barely seem to know exist in Final Fantasy XIV somehow. Among them every day, almost any day that I play, I participate in an event known as The Hunt. It's an open world activity where you track down or even spawn specific monsters in large groups to earn a variety of rewards. So this video, I want to talk about it because I think it's something that a lot of new players in particular will miss. So the hunt was initially introduced back in patch 2.1. By reaching the second lieutenant rank with your grand company and doing the unlock quest for the hunt while you're there, you are able to accept hunt bills from the nearby board. Now completing these reward gill and a variety of different hunt currencies depending on which board you're actually using. A Realm Reborn hunts reward allied seals, Heavensward and Stormblood hunts reward centurio seals, and Shadowbringers hunts reward sacks of nuts. We'll cover what you can spend those on a bit later. So there are different hunt boards across the game depending on which expansion's hunt boards you're actually looking for. After you unlock the basic one in your Grand Company of Realm Reborn, which is where the hunt bills will be, you can unlock Heavensward hunts in Ishgard and Idleshire, Stormblood hunts in Kugane, and Shadowbringers hunts in the Crystarium. There's also other boards in other locations, such as Rolger's Reach as well as Yulmore, but it'll depend on which expansion's hunts you're actually looking for. Now, the ones from Heavensward and Onward are excellent leveling tools, offering daily objectives that you can do for experience points and weekly objectives for more hunt currencies. These pretty much replace the feature that you get at the low levels, the hunting log that you might get as a new player. Think of these like the alternative to that, but repeatable daily and weekly. Now, new players would be remiss to ignore this or completely miss this feature altogether, especially when I tell you what you can buy with these currencies. Now, while these hunt bills are the most basic function of the hunt itself, there are actually open world bosses that spawn under various conditions that reward currencies as well. A rank hunt marks are monsters that spawn every five to six hours out in the world. Discord communities have actually come together to form what are called trains for these, where players scout the locations of all of them in a given expansion, and then chain them all together, sometimes having attendance of over a hundred players. Players also hop around different servers in their data center and do multiple trains in order to participate in this content for hours on end. If you'd like to learn more, you're going to have to look for Discord groups for your data center and join them to get more information. I'm on Ether, so the one I use is Ether Hunts, but there's different ones for different regions of the world and different data centers and all that stuff. So if anyone has any recommendations in the comment section, please put them there because it would definitely be useful. And then you got the big money hunts, the S rank hunt marks, which actually respawn every few days. However, unlike the A ranks, which just spawned on a timer, these actually require specific conditions to spawn. Some of these are really easy to understand, but it's still kind of weird to explain. So one example is the Central Shroud. It requires rain weather to occur twice consecutively. So players have no control over that. Players just need to track the weather and make sure they know when it was killed last and they can get an idea of when this will spawn. However, there are others that are hilarious and the player has to intervene quite a bit more. Tarchia over in Amarang requires players to use the blue magic spell self-destruct in specific locations for a chance at spawning it. There's also like Bone Crawler over in the peaks, which requires you to use the Chocobo Porter, and every time you use the Chocobo Porter, if it's available to spawn, there's a chance it'll spawn. It takes a quick Google search and you can find all sorts of weird conditions for these ones, and there are actually communities for spawning these S ranks on the various servers and data centers. And it's not even really done there, because there's one grade above S rank, but it's one specific monster that's available in the game. Some people call it S+, and some people call it double S rank, but essentially, it's a rare spawn in Shadowbringers areas that sometimes occurs after killing an S rank. So sometimes it'll say there's like minions that are all around the map, and there's a bunch of B ranks that spawn. And so long as all of them are engaged and killed without the players completely wiping in the next five minutes, then the double S rank will spawn in a set location. Uh, that just rewards even more things than the S ranks does. It doesn't have any like unique gear rewards or anything. It's just more of the various rewards that we're going to be talking about a little bit later. Now, I've explained what this is, but what is the point of all this? I told you at the beginning, I'd tell you what all these currencies did. Why even do the hunt? Well, in my opinion, it's one of the most beneficial contents that you can farm in the game. Now, a Realm Reborn hunts drop allied seals, and I think we should start with those because they're at the lowest part of the food chain. And those can be used to purchase Etherite tickets. And I've made separate videos about that, but Etherite tickets allows you to eliminate the cost of teleports, which adds up over multiple uses. I haven't paid for a teleport in like five years, and I've saved millions upon millions of guild doing so. 
One thing, quality of life, Square Enix, if you're listening, can you make it so I don't need to press yes every time I want to use one or no or anything? Just give me like a lock-in option so I don't have to choose every time. Just uh, between us right now. On top of that, with Allied Seals, you can grab stuff to level Decent, Old Glamours, Minions, Ventures for your retainers, whatever floats your boat. I just go with Etherite Tickets or Ventures sometimes. The riding maps are also there, and these will actually increase your mount speeds for a Realm Reborn Zones, but it only works on ground mount speeds, and this is true for all of the riding maps, for all the expansions going forward. So, considering a Realm Reborn's getting flying in 5.3, I wouldn't personally recommend spending the seals on these. The next currency is Centurio Seals, and these are jointly used for Heavensward and Stormblood. Now, if you want to spend these in Heavensward areas, you go to Ishgard's Forgotten Night, and in Stormblood, you want to go over to Ralgar's Reach. Heavensward has more Etherite tickets, Ventures, Glam, and Minions. Stormblood, on the other hand, starts to reward things like Grade 6 Materia instead of Etherite tickets, as well as new minions and upgraded gear. It can be really good to use these to level Descent, which you don't really need to anymore since the Descent changes, but it doesn't hurt if you just got spares lying around and you don't need any of this other stuff. Now for Shadowbringers, the currency is called Sacks of Nuts, and yes, it is just as great in Shout Chat as you might imagine. Now this being the most recent expansion's hunt currency at the time of this video means these are probably the things that you're most interested in. Now these can be used to buy minions, mount, some of the older gear, uh, but more importantly you can use it to buy things like grade 7 or grade 8 materia, which is what I mostly buy when I actually have spare nuts. Finally, you can buy upgrade materials for tombstone gear. Now this was true for all of the older currencies, but because it's older expansion gear, it's not really as relevant of a conversation topic. Still useful if you can find any items that you want to upgrade, or you know maybe you need them for leveling, but uh, for the most part, I think that's the most relevant thing that's going to come out of these for any player who's just learning about it now. Now this video is being put out in patch 5.2. 5.3 is probably still a couple months away. In patch 5.3, allegory upgrade materials should start finding their way into sack of nut exchanges, giving you another means of upgrading your allegory tombstone gear outside of Savage or just the weekly 24 man quests, which usually get them as well. For now, it just has the 5.0 upgrade mats, but stocking up on a few of these before the patch comes out and then maybe grabbing a piece or at least having a little bit of a head start towards another piece can be great for getting caught up even more in item level. Now, hunts don't just reward these specific currencies. I feel like I haven't been very clear about that at all. They also reward all sorts of tombstones, from poetics all the way up to allegory. Hell, I cap my tomes every week on Shadowbringers hunts, since A ranks each give 10 allegory. They also drop clusters that can be exchanged directly for materia. Now, the Shadowbringer stuff is, again, the stuff I'm most interested in, where you can exchange these clusters for Grade 7 and Grade 8 materia. I have hundreds of these things, and I'll probably have thousands by the time the next item level bump actually happens. I have not had to buy combat materia in years, thanks to the hunts. In fact, I often sell excess for gill since... Why not? I take excess tombstones and sell crafting mats, excess materia, and then sell that from the hunt, avoid paying for teleports with either eye tickets, and fly around the world blowing up and eating sandwiches to try and spawn big bosses. What a life. I personally just enjoy the hunt because it's kind of just chill. It used to be an incredibly hostile feature before Discord communities really came together to focus on creating communities to track and spawn these things. It used to just be one big wild, wild west whenever one of these things spawned, and I'm sure that plenty of you have stories, even that are recent to this day, that involve stuff like this that just goes south. Shout chats that just turn into things that you would never repeat out loud or even type into the comment section below. But man, I just don't really pay attention to a lot of that stuff. I look for the A rank trains, I occasionally participate in trying to spawn S ranks, not as much as I should to be honest, considering how many people I see actually making the effort more than me. And it's just fun for me, it's just very, like, almost low effort, but not really, it's just, I don't know how to describe it. It's just a chill, fun way for me to spend a little bit of time in the open world in Final Fantasy XIV, and avoid having to pay for materia, teleports, or anything, pretty much, while still even making some gill. What's there to complain about? Well, the monsters sometimes disappear, because there's too many people there, I feel bad for people with long load times, and sometimes the way that these uh, trains are conducted are a little weird. I'll be the first to admit that as someone on Ether, but overall, it's still a good time. I get a good laugh even if I'm frustrated from it, and it also gives me the chance to just hop on jobs I don't usually play and meme a little bit because, let's be honest, I'm probably not going to do a real rotation on these things when I can't even apply debuffs half the time. 
But anyway, I just wanted to make a video about this because it's something I think new players will miss. And I've, having done a bunch of new player related stuff and in the process of making more new player stuff ahead of 5.3 as a Realm Reborn revamp, I just figured it was a good idea to add it because it'd be a great feature for new players to look into, especially when it comes to those hunt bills and leveling. The extra gill from that, the seals you get from that, honestly just the breakup from the daily monotony or spamming the main scenario quest can be honestly a, a welcome change a lot of the times. And we'll probably do a lot of these new player videos leading up to 5.3, so those of you who may be finally trying after hearing it'll be cut back, just know a little bit more. But thanks for watching, be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and if you think there's a feature that new players really ought to know about, then you might want to put it in the comment section below. Anyway, thanks for watching, I'll see you all in the next one, and until then, take care.